faith within your hands. Oh, 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 oh. Faith within your hands. Oh, 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 oh. Faith within your hands. Ready, set, imagine, and welcome Creative Puzzle audience to another episode of Hashtag Creativity Will Save Us Phase 2. We save when venues close, windows open, a vision into the future, re-emerging or still navigating after uh, the COVID-19 emergency, during the COVID-19 emergency. Today, we have a very special guest from Europe, directly from Brussels. We're going to be live with conceptual artist Peter M. Frias, he was one of the protagonists of the series that you followed on YouTube, Hashtag Creativity Will Save Us, that we launched during the lockdown to uh, understand how creativity, imagination, and, and, the, and the power of resilience could have saved us during that very dark moment, and then how uh, creativity can still give us tools to keep on persevere and uh, follow our dreams, our visions for the future, for our professional careers, for our personal lives, and for the collectivity. I see that Peter is connected right now, so I'm gonna add him to our conversation and start the interview. And hello, dear. Hi, Peter. Hello, Tommaso, that's a pleasure. Hello. Hi, it's such a pleasure uh, seeing you, meeting you virtually, because we've never met in person. And, that's but true. I feel that I, I know you, are, you artistically through, through your work and the, the chance to mm -hmm. uh, envision your work in our Creativity Will Save Us series. Thank you so very much for the gift that you Welcome. gave us with your work. Thank you, thank so, you so much. Cool. How is it going down in Brussels these days? You yeah, know, actually, the, the problem is that um, it seems that summer is over. So we're now entering a period where the temperatures are falling and the, the rain is coming up. This year it has been exceptionally good, the weather, really hot and warm. So now that it's sad, the summer is gone. If not, of course, we are still in uh, COVID second wave, uh, which mm -hmm. means mm -hmm. travel restrictions across Europe and contradicting rules, what to do and not to do, right? So we should wear a mask, but it's not really controlled. People say five, uh, the bubble say is about five people, but um, you ha can have more. It's a little bit arbitrary, which means basically it depends on everybody that making the best out of it, right? Right, absolutely. Well, I can I can feel uh, the sense of confusion that uh, yeah, you know it's definitely. here in our everyday life. Even here, of course, in the United States, we're living, we're still living, you know, under the effect of this yeah. cacophony that the, the media uh, yeah. are, uh, you know. Um, are kind of like uh, filtering through everything that, mm. that, we're, that we're living in. And it's very hard to, to understand and to kind of like navigate in between uh, what is real and what is yeah. an illusion. And I think that that really reflects in the work that you've done uh, with yeah. your collective artists in Brussels, specifically yeah. about the moment in time that we're living. Can you tell us about uh, how did you, uh, how did uh, uh, the COVID-19 imaginary entered into your artistic world and how did you interpret that through your conceptual videos? Yeah, yeah, okay. So I think of course it started, I guess, six months, seven months ago. So it's a little bit already of history, but it's still quite, quite vivid. Um, I guess it was on a little bit of three levels. Um, first of all, I was staying at home. Uh, I'm also working in research, so I was teleworking from day one. And actually my home is also an atelier, so I have all my beamers, projections, equipment. So all of a sudden I was living in my atelier. That was a difference. And then of course I was working on conceptual projects like being on Mars or what is the existence um, beyond transhumanism. Mm -hmm. And then I, I'm also part of a group that just before the lockdown starts to do um, improvisation. And so very simple. Now, for example, it, there is this hype going to Mars, but all of a sudden you're in a lockdown, you cannot go out. So you realize what it means, what it means to be uh, in a capsule or just being on Mars. You cannot go out, right? Even if it's beautiful or 
So that was already a strange thing that you really, you experienced the lockdown as such, right? And the uh, improvisation group was, a, we met just once, literally the evening before the, the lockdown. And they were saying, so what can we do now? Because we want to, uh, it's about improvisation, what can we do? Mm -hmm. And then um, I think quite a few people started to do um, collaborative jamming or uh, performances, which turned out to be very difficult. I think there were not really systems available. And we decided to go a different way, more cutting footage and doing a, a visual and sound collection for really being more edgy and showing what it means, right? That you can just not create a work. So we did uh, like a drone, an overlay of many, many uh, individual um, um, experiences and making this rich sound collage where you're referring to. Basically, it's, it is rich because it, it has 10, 12 layers of uh, visuals and, and, and sound. Right? Visuals. Yeah, yeah. And um, of course, then there was uh, a few weeks later, we, we could go out but you are not allowed to do any kind of performances. And of course, all spaces were closed. In Brussels, you only could do um, food shopping, but you were not right. really allowed to drive or whatever. So, which means literally, um, we started to just go out, trying to find a power socket and, and play in the street on various places. And this was great for us and great for the people because it was, it didn't exist anything else on, uh, on, on spontaneous uh, art performances event, right? Right. And even today, uh, if you want to, if you ask for a permission to go into the street, the uh, local municipality is not going to allow you to perform. So even today, a few months later, and even we have the mask and the rules, basically, the, our art is a little bit illegal, and we just do it again that we find a power socket. And that's also a little bit, I must say, uh, disappointing that... Um, there has been, hasn't been a learning uh, in the government about those kinds of events, right? I think they start to open up uh, theaters and even the opera, but the smaller events were really about the culture. And I guess it's the same in New York and the States. They're actually suffering from uh, support, but even just from um, organizational uh, hurdles and um, discouragement, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're, you described exactly mm. how, what the artists and the yeah. community of artists is going through this yeah. moment in time. I think it's very fascinating to you, and I've never uh, quite um, you know, ventured into this concept of uh, uh, artists jamming. So can you take us a little bit into the creative process, your creative process, and when you, and when you work uh, in jam artistic sessions with, uh, with, other, yeah. with other creatives? How do you work like that? Okay, okay. So I think uh, here in Brussels, the people I know, there are a little bit distinction between the jamming and the free improvisation, right? Mm -hmm. I guess the jamming is where you just um, come together and you team up and you instantly produce something. And I guess the free improvisation is that uh, each uh, artist, musician, dancer, but also visual artist has a repertoire. And it's more that you are used to play together. We have a very good listening to the other and then you try to capture the moment of um, the space, mm -hmm. the people around, and of course, how you feel it, right? And um, typically, of course, it's done by musicians, but you also invite the dancers. And normally in the um, space inside, I would use a video projector and I would move around the projector, so I would do the visual improvisation. And because it's not possible, I continue now to do uh, artistic videos about the, about the performance. But, um, it's um, the interesting part is that um, it's actually completely accessible, the uh, free improvisation, and it has to be done live to people. And um, no one can do it. You always need a group and you need to listen and you need to connect to people. And that actually makes it, makes it interesting. And it's, it's always in situ. And um, how do you say? It, it makes a lot of fun to connect to people. And the best moments were there when just people were jumping in or trying to disturb us. Right. and um, enriching the, the setting. That's, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful way to, mm -hmm. to produce art. I see mm -hmm. like in the videos that you, you sent to us for the Creativity Will Save Us project, we do see these multi-layered uh, yeah. visuals, yeah. but also it, it's an audiovisual sensation. It's a, a 3D sensation because you see uh, images, but uh, there's, uh, there's noise, mm -hmm. but there's music, and then and also, uh, you utilize, if, I, if I'm correct, 
also sort of like um, ex excerpts from the media, right? We have yeah, precisely. Some, yeah. yeah, and that made it very. I felt when I watched your uh, uh, the, these artistic performances mm -hmm. that uh, you you guys really kind of like um, uh, you really touched upon uh, the the reality that we're living today. This very mm -hmm. Uh, you know, as I was saying before, uh, cacophony mm. that that of mm. uh, noise that is around us and this yeah. pollution of information and and I think that that uh, play um, you know the way that you portrayed it visually was mm. very very fascinating and also mm. very true, even mm -hmm. though maybe you cannot uh, understand exactly you know the storytelling, mm. but. It's the storytelling of, of confusion, which is and, and, and uncertainty, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I'm, I'm curious to, to know a little bit more about your artistic uh, history and your journey through art. How, how did you find out that you had this in you and uh, how did you develop your career? Okay. Well, I started as a um, abstract painter. Mm -hmm. um, playing around a lot with colors and, and big uh, spatula work. So it was a little bit rough, uh, but powerful and colorful artistic work. And um, I did this, I had um, exhibitions. I started even to use a little bit of sound, loudspeakers integrated in the, in the artwork. But I got a little bit bored about the way it's presented. It was basically it's receptive, right? You, you make a you put it on the wall, on display, and people come, and you have the very massage. And I was always wondering, can I connect more in a different way? And I think first idea was to make um, connect the very massage to a live event, and and bring other people and musicians into it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it happened then that I was more intrigued in using video as just a medium, um, a footage mm -hmm. video where you would express and you would have, of course, a different realm than, than just painting, right? And um, so I started to, to work on, on video, and, but still connecting video to performances. So for example, I would perform the, uh, a musician and I would work on, um, on the video and he would perform in real time, right? And um, the opposite was that um, there were music groups, music events, and I would then um, project videos and basically people would say what I would like to, to have and I would cut footage and would animate that in real time and support the other ones, right? I would just have fun to collaborate with people. And I think that's the, that's the way it moved on. And then I was a little bit into audiovisual uh, installations, big mm -hmm. installations where you have uh, gesture recognition. And I realized that most of the time if you do that, you spend actually on testing and making it robust and solid. And uh, I guess that's not our society. Our society, like you're saying, it's a cacophony, it's fresh eyed it's disturbing. So I was trying to connect audiovisual art more to, the, um, to a performance approach and to um, certain sort of a danger that there can be an accident or it can, or if it's not perfect, it's more representing real life than it's perfect, right? Got it. Um, and- so Sort of like a super realistic idea, right? Yeah. Hyper-realistic idea of, of precisely, reality. Precisely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you would like that. And um, then, just for concluding that, because I'm working in, in research, and of, you know, we all know about the buzzwords today, about the big data, the AI, um, hyper-connectivity, um, mm -hmm. I often get a little bit bored that the words are used, and I feel that people don't know exactly what it means, both in, both in positive and negative terms. And actually, this inspires me then during my artwork. That's why I got more conceptual to reflect on what it means, right? So, um, for example, uh, there would be an AI on Mars. You can call it Mars, eh? And Mars eh, would then maybe have an idea saying, we are sufficient on Mars. We don't need Earth. And because well, I think that what we do is going to act in a linear way, like what we propose or foresee is going to happen, so AI is not, it's just a little bit improving business, but it's not changing the world. And I try to exaggerate for seeing what it really means and what human values are. And that actually makes it now interesting too. Um, and that's why I use, you were mentioning a lot of, um, of footage, because instead of animating myself, it would cause a lot of time, I would just take what I get, of course, respecting the other work, and would try to turn it and manipulate it, but in a way that it's 
it's giving a new touch or it's a new, it's a new creation that's still valorizing the original input. Right. That's a little bit what I do today. Yeah. That's very interesting. So you say, um, so basically you, 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 your subject matters are very close to, to the threats and the dangers that we are uh, leaving as a human species this time Definitely. specifically, this time, this time around, and the extreme, uh, the the extremes that we are going to going to, right? Yeah. So you think yeah. like stretching, stretching those those visuals into upper realistic interpretation of yeah. that, we could face uh, maybe a glimpse into the future, and 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 so maybe hopefully have a yeah. try to to go in a, in a different way. Right. So what do you think, based on that, that we talked about a little bit, but what do you think that based on that are the main threats that we are uh, living in uh, as human beings right now? Right now. OK, mm. Mm. that's that's interesting. And of course, I can just come from my from a humble perspective. Uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess. The, the, I feel there are a few elements, right? One is certainly that we are on a, on a spaceship and mm -hmm. potentially we are just growing and getting more and more and the planet is not endless, right? Um, and I guess at the same time, we have been not smart enough to, to master our resources and the way we deal with energy, right? The energy we produce and consume. And I guess we have, uh, we have been very successful in extending human Life and I think at least um, having the possibility that somebody can have a happy life. But I guess we fail on the on the resources we consume, and which of course might uh, bring us into problems. And um, I guess for the time being, it's just that we are growing and growing. We are now I think seven seven point five billions of people, and if this goes on, uh, it, it might be difficult. And then of course it's not difficult for everybody, but then. Um, groups of people, regions, minorities will start to suffer and actually we then draw back because I think we overall managed to, to, to move on in, in, in human history and, and maybe well-being and we would then actually regress. So I guess we're a little bit in a, uh, in a phase of hyper-civilization and um, I guess the challenge is now to, to make, bring us forward to the next step. And, um, and of course, conceptually, we are the, the only species on Earth who is completely beyond the others in, um, in evolutionary terms, which means actually we have no more enemy. Uh, and the changes actually which are now coming are provoked by us, unless there's any catastrophe from, from outer space. From nature or, yeah. yeah. Or, or, so, or, or, so basically, or, we are have it now a little in our hand what, what we're going to do. And, um, and I think at the same time, our needs are, are quite basic, right? It's, um, about the happiness, about the food, and about security right. and fun and love. Essential needs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I guess um, we fail a bit connecting the essential needs in simple terms to the way we run our planet. Um, which means if we gradually could improve, it would really make a big, a big difference. Absolutely. So, what do you think that uh, creatives, artists? What can uh, what can they do to to help us, uh, you know, yeah. go through this? And because I do believe we do believe with mm -hmm. our creative puzzle project, really in the power of creativity, yeah. imagination, art, to push uh, the boundaries and and to be be this this guide uh, and this light for for mm -hmm. human beings to yeah. to progress on the next step of our evolution, which we hope it's an evolution and not an involution. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what do you think that the central role of the artist is yeah. today? Today. Well, I think the, first of all, I like that the, uh, the idea of what an artist is today is now much broader than it used to be in the past, right? And that mm -hmm. creates also possibilities for artists who maybe in the past were basically uh, being occupied as a painter or as a sculptor or a musician, right? So I think that's now much more possible. Um, there are many, many interesting initiatives. Uh, I guess one would just be to propose alternatives which the system of today doesn't produce. So the idea we have saturated markets, I think there are many, many approaches of coexistence, of um, 3D printing, of self-sufficiency, 
of going back to what is essential, going back to regional context, to nature. And that's often uh, inspired by artists because the artists often, they don't like bullshit. They just want to do it like they feel it is, right? And that's the, I guess an artist often, they're not strategically or like researchers following, they're just following their instinct for changing things and avoiding, which I think is, um, is ridiculous. And then of course, the other point of the artist is that you go actually in the system, which means in industrial and government processes, and you would like to contribute in a, in a way that it, it helps the system actually to survive. So you would say uh, in development processes, you could develop technology which is more humane, mm -hmm. the way you integrate the end users, or you could um, have products which are more colorful, or the way you would integrate people with additional needs uh, into society, there can be many, many different ways um, where artists can actually play the, uh, um, an interface. And I also think often artists actually as a resource and as a creative resource um, are not expensive. If you think what engineers and people often cost, artists are actually yeah, affordable. And um, by their thinking have, I guess that they just want to bring things forward. So they're, and, uh, some, I guess, a little bit innocent, and some are more uh, concerned and, and try to, to, to bring a system forward. So I think part is outside the system, and part, I would say, is certainly um, changing the, today's processes. And I guess there is an interesting hook. Um, today, we feel it's all about the innovation, right? Mm -hmm. And because innovation is a bit saturated, we try to go new ways. And there are interesting programs uh, in Europe uh, also from the European Commission, I think also in, in the States, um, how you would integrate artists and, and even also scientists in a, in a uh, way of, of, of um, co-creation. And, co so, yeah. Yeah, and often um, it's all thought that artists are more into the, the product design or the, uh, the final product and there may be beautiful products and an artist was very creative in, in shaping the interface and the, the finishing. But I think more interesting is often the process that an artist maybe would at the beginning stimulate a different thinking. He would maybe, he or she reveal whatever uh, about um, psychological issues or problems. And that could actually um, feel a better well-being and uh, could then stimulate different outcomes than just being a product designer. Absolutely. You know, like I really do, do believe that, uh, I'm so happy that you shared these thoughts, these yeah. thoughts with us because that's exactly the mission mm. of our conversations is yeah. to inspire, inspire people also to, to go back to, to the artists and to, yeah. because uh, sometimes we can, put, we can think of artists uh, as, as people that are, uh, you know, in another world that are far away from us, but yeah. in truth, uh, in truth, they are part of the community and they are so. there with us every day to, to yeah. feel, you know, yeah. to uh, uh, interpret and uh, uh, what we feel and what the community feels and bring it into their arts. And yeah. then I do believe that artists are visionaries so they can, uh, they can have glimpses into yeah. what is going to happen, uh, what's going to happen to us. And they can, can be and they are, uh, and they should be even more part of mm. the, the co-creation uh, when we think about businesses, industries, yeah. Yeah. and and also I do believe that it, there should be more artists that are in charge, uh, you know, when it mm -hmm. comes to uh, to guiding uh, to guiding country, for example. I yeah. um, I come from a classical the classical culture because I'm Italian, so mm -hmm. I studied, you know, uh, I remember studying the, uh, the, the Greek uh, the Greeks the, yeah. the Greek society, ancient Greek society mm -hmm. where the philosophers and the artists were at the head yeah. of the community because they had the knowledge and they could yeah. uh, they could inspire people and, and there was an ethic attached to, to yeah. the the figure of the artist and the, and the mm. philosopher and and I do agree that um, the majority of the artists who feel that art for them is a mission they mm. have a pure vision and they have, they have an innocence that they bring. Uh, to uh -huh. the world that it's uh, that it's yeah. unique and it's less affected by that cacophony that we were talking about at the beginning of this conversation. Uh -huh. So uh, I would like to uh, to ask you what are you doing specifically uh -huh. and what are your 
upcoming projects that you're working on that are in line of what we're talking about right now? I think, first of all, what you said earlier, um, creativity saves us. And uh, I think each week is different. So I guess each week there is creativity is um, a way for getting through it. Uh, I, I think I have two streams. One is um, it's a conceptual video or what I call existence beyond transhumanism. And I guess this was very much inspired uh, during the COVID what mm -hmm. existence means, going out to nature that we are a product of Earth, not, not more, not less, and how this, could, how this could, we could evolve. And I'm questioning different feelings and, um, and issues and maybe problems even humans as such uh, have in their evolution. That's one thing. And um, even there, the video is not finished and I try to incorporate every week what, I, what I'm just learning, what I could turn into, um, into some things or thoughts or just visual animation. And the second thing is on the, um, the improvisation group, group, which is called Lama Fi. Mm -hmm. um, actually, we applied for a grant because now there is research on um, what is the future of culture. Because like what we're the saying, culture. the mm -hmm. culture, it's, I guess we have, um, of course, the artist as such, but we have also even an industry where we have um, established systems where also artists are sometimes just like in a, in a, in a mechanism, the machinery. And of course, that they are, it also stopped. So I think a lot is also now what, what, what it means to be an artist, or even if you cannot play in the opera orchestra, how can you still be happy in a way with your capabilities and your musical sensitivity you have, right? The sensibility. So, we would like to explore how we could then um, connect uh, inside outside spaces i like very much your slogan right if venues when the venues closes windows uh, open up okay. like that very much which is actually that's the true reality right and i think it's also the way what um, what can an artist do if he can he or she or it whatever cannot um do in, in, in the usual context, which means a performance stage or a gallery or a museum. And, uh, and I think, of course, today it's a lot about the, the co-creation. So we really want to, to integrate people. And we're looking forward that we could do some research um, with the improvisation group on the way we could propose that. And we would also then like to discuss to cultural centers because they're also facing um, issues like um, they have to change the, the, the program, the booking, uh, people are there. So there's a lot of interest, there are difficult areas, so there is things to be done. So I guess there is also for the, uh, for the response from the organizers, they would be interested in getting some, some clues or even having some sort of pilots where they can experiment. So, and I liked it very much besides the conceptual video, being in the street, or close to people and um, and work on uh, on the future. That's my small contribution. But if I see in Brussels, there are not many people going out on the street and performing. So Why it's uh, it's a beauty for us. How do you think that that will change? Do you think? How do you perceive uh, this waving of of things? And mm. Do you think that is that that far away the moment where? Actually, my question uh, really yes. is, do you think there will, uh, there, it will ever be a back to mm. what we considered normal before on it's a forever change mm. that we are experiencing? So yeah. the world tomorrow will be completely different from the one that we, are, yeah. we were used to think about. What do you think? Yeah. I know that it's a very difficult question. Yeah, right? yeah, sure, sure. And of course, it's, it's, I think we all have our personal opinions. I would exactly. just express without claiming that it's um, for the majority. Um, I guess the interesting part was during COVID that we got to learn or to know that things are diff possible in a different way. So for example, you stay at home and you do the shop once a week, if ever, right? Or you could say, um, I'm used to go to a concert venue where thousands of people are. Now I go to concert venues that's 20 people or 30 and still I can listen to music. So I, I think we got a bit used to, to the opposite what we maybe normally do. I feel that the established systems, even like opera and national theater, they will certainly go back um, to, 
to performances and to creation. For me, the, the, I think the question for the moment is actually, is it's about the, um, the number of, of people in the audience, right? Uh, because today things are opening up, but of course we are not uh, for big events or if you go to an opera, places are empty if you go to a museum. Um, and I also feel we got a bit, I wouldn't say used, but now we, we have this subconscious feeling that having maybe too many people around us and too close is, is maybe not good. It's a little bit frightening, right? Because maybe there's a, a virus or if somebody is just coughing. So I guess we have now a different way of, of proximity and, and maybe positively also respect. Um, so I, and then of course we are now more into the uh, this hybrid things like we are now discussing, uh, which is beautiful over the over the ocean and um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and and also of course there are things saying, why do I now come to need to come to New York to talk to you if I could do it like that and um, I, I skip two flights. Um, right. Right. So I guess there will be a mix that. Some things will remain, I guess, to before, and the rest will be much more in a hybrid way, being online, offline, inside, outside, remotely, maybe different configurations. So even you could then imagine um, a big play, which by its creation has maybe an outside component or has already a, um, a, um, an online component, which actually is part of the... Uh, of the play. So I guess it will influence the creativity and the way, of course, artists can perform and, and, and interact. Yeah, yeah, no, I do believe I, I actually, and I want to say hi to Juzi Caruso, uh, okay. a wonderful artist, hi, wonderful pianist, that actually she introduced us virtually. Yes. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to host uh, Juzi on our show. Yeah. Thank you so very much, Peter. I feel like I could talk to you forever. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that there's so many other topics and so many other suggestions that we can learn from your art. And I'm looking forward to, to, see, your, to see your projects. And sure, actually, sure. let's tell our audience, where can we view your projects? I know you have a beautiful website. What yes. are the other venues that maybe people can experience online or in Brussels if you do something yes. in physical spaces? I will do. So it's basically, yeah, it's my website. And then, of course, um, on Facebook, I always inform about the, the venues. Uh, I guess the next thing will be uh, this conceptual video I would like to show. I have also some contacts to China. But precisely what I was saying before, just showing it somewhere is no longer interesting. So it would be interesting that it can also be seen worldwide. So I would potentially then make sure that there is some sort of a live streaming or there's maybe a... Um, an internet copy which is accessible during the, during the, the thing and of course I'm looking forward uh, what you're going to do because you are now in phase two yeah so I yeah. don't know what your phase three would be but I'm I'm, I'm really happy and I think uh, Juicy and myself we, we, are, we are big fans of you and um, and it's actually beautiful to talk to, to somebody who's by, by nature by culture close to Europe but at the same time also living in a different world which has this different special beauty and, and, and challenges. We know all, right? Um, but that's the way we should do. And that's exactly. precisely what we, yes. we can save us. Absolutely, thank you. Yes, yeah. I, we feel thank like, you. we feel that slowly we're creating a community around yeah. us that is all about art, yeah. creativity, positivity, and, and, yeah. and, and navigate through, through challenges and changes yeah. uh, by being very, very honest and very honest human beings with with beautiful with with a beautiful soul yeah. that we would like to make the world be lightened by with the artists like you certainly mm -hmm. we are helping already the world to be a better place i'm sure about it that's our mission mm -hmm. that's what we that's what we love to mm -hmm. communicate to our yeah. audience so thank you so very much peter for this thank conversation you. looking forward to the next one and good luck with all of your for all of your projects. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tomas. All the best. Grazie mille. Ciao, Thank ciao. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Ciao, ciao. Bye. 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 Bye.